Hello and welcome to another episode of Unstuck with Hypnopunk Transformation with Edge. It has been a while, I have been on hiatus, but regular podcasts now resume. As always, thank you for all the people that have uh, left reviews on iTunes, on Google Play, on Spotify, on YouTube, wherever you listen to it. It warms my heart. If there's any more content, if there's other subjects you'd like me to cover in the personal development realm, then please do shoot me an email at mal, M-A-I-L, at lukenosis.com. L-U-K-E-N-O-S-I-S dot com and let me know what you like to see covered in upcoming episodes but we have have uh, some excellent content coming up for you and today today's episode is entitled 40 things I've learned see last week it was my birthday and this is the only place that I am gonna announce this publicly I was 40 I know I look like I'm 30 and I act as if I'm 20, um, but indeed I was 40. So today is the, the 40 lessons, life lessons that I've learned on 40 years in earth. So I'm going to share that with you. Number one, love hurts. Yes, indeed, love hurts. It's a beautiful, wonderful thing. It's one of our six human needs if you listen to Tony Robbins. It can awaken us. It, it, it's perhaps the only thing that life is really all about at the end of the day. Anything that means anything. And love can hurt. When love's going really, really well, it's beautiful. But when you lose people, when it isn't going so well, love can hurt. And love can hurt almost worse than just about anything out there. Number two, everything is bullshit. Yes, everything is bullshit. I'm bullshit. Hypnosis is bullshit. Personal development is bullshit. Religion is bullshit. Politics are bullshit. Everything is bullshit. Now that doesn't mean that things can't be useful. It doesn't mean that things aren't good or aren't bad. But everything in this world is bullshit. Every relationship you have with everyone is bullshit. Nothing is made of anything. It's all bullshit. But there can be amazing quality and amazing gems as you sift through this bullshit. But don't buy into anything, including me, too much. And certainly your own limitations. Don't buy into them at all. And remember, everything's bullshit. Spring, number three, is my favourite season. You see, in summertime, in England where I grew up, we'd probably only have two weeks of what you'd actually consider summertime. Um, every year the rest of the time it was eternally somewhat gloomy or uh, kind of autumn like weather and I developed I realized that I'm um, in extreme heat or anything above about 20 degrees um, wasn't pleasant for me moving to Canada people would often ask me how do you deal with the weather how do you deal with the winter I'm like, it ain't the winter I have a problem with it's this summer in England where I'm from we don't have um, air conditioning units at home because we never need them because it never gets that hot but it's the summer that I had problems with now winter growing up in London England I think I probably snore, saw snow twice in my life and hardly enough to build a snowman so it wasn't until I moved to Canada that I actually saw real snow and although it's beautiful um, when the weather given that really there's two seasons in Canada where I live which is winter and uh, hockey as they say here in Canada and um, although I like how beautiful it looks when the snow just first drops um, it can limit people's activities and mobility and it fucks up your shoes and boots and I do like my wonderful boots and it fucks it up in all the snow and the salt that they put on the snow um, autumn is okay but autumn's a bit close a bit too close to um, to winter and it's sandwiched between my two least favorite uh, seasons of summer and winter although I do like that summer makes people more cheerful and uh, they seem to exhibit more serotonin um, inside their system I'm imagining because everyone seems a bit more happy and the nights are longer I like spring because spring is just at the end of summer excuse me I've got my seasons completely wrong and um, spring is just at the end of, of winter and we have a long winter here in Canada and it's when the trees start to blossom and change and sh is in the air it's just the right temperature for me uh, the ability to go out a little bit more be outside uh, be one with nature and not too hot not too cold so spring is my favorite season the fourth thing that I learned 
in my 40 years on earth is start things early whatever you want to do start now start as soon as that thought comes into your head do something I wish that I'd started so many of my projects that were mere seeds in my imagination 20 years ago and I wish I'd started them then because I would have been so much better now at things and um, the pleasure I got from the things that I do now I'd had more pleasure earlier on in life so don't delay if there's something you want to try whether that's play a guitar learn a martial art learn to talk to the opposite sex build a business get in shape stop smoking whatever it is start now now is the easiest it will be in your life because every subsequent second minute hour day week month year that goes by it gets exponentially harder to start something new as those old patterns uh, of resistance start to get ingrained in us like etchings on a big stone wall if that makes sense so start things now number five i still love wrestling i remember when i first started to get into wrestling about 30 years ago my nan my dear old nan said ah oh, this is just a phase you'll grow out of it 30 years later i still haven't grown out of it and i'm happy that i haven't grown out of it i still love wrestling and secretly if i was taller and more athletic wish that i was a wrestler and develop a, a wrestling character and I try to live my life in the real world as strange as it sounds as a wrestling character to make my own version of WWE where it's WWL which is uh, walk with Luke not walk with Elias number six the sixth thing that I learnt being on earth for 40 years as I uh, sat down last week and started to think what have been my learnings in 40 years these were the top 40 things that came up Number six, you can learn, you can love more than one person. It's true. I know we're, we're sold this uh, Disney image, this Disney movie that you fall in love with one person and it's only that person for the rest of your life and, and you can't love anyone else and perhaps if they do, if they're no longer in your life, then perhaps there is an opportunity for you to, to, to find love with someone else. Um, but I'm here to challenge that and say, you can love more than one person at once and i don't just mean your family your your siblings your friends yeah we get that but i mean i mean kind of romantic love it is it is possible to love more than one person at, at once um because a heart is unlimited it's it's not the amount of money you've got in your bank account and when that goes to zero you have nothing left love is abundant it's absolutely possible to love more than two people at once and that's not demeaning to those people that's not deceitful to those people at all it's just we have the ability to love more than one pe person because love is just this beautiful thing that you can give and if you, if you find someone that touches your heart and you find more than one person it, it's amazing we can love more than one person at once it's absolutely doable and it's okay because at the end of the day what is there other than love when you really think about it number seven happiness and excitement are the same for me for many 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 years i resisted the word happy i could never tell anyone i was happy because uh, i don't know i had to be a martyr and struggle for things and fight for things and work hard for things and i don't know if happiness was that last destination then I didn't know if I ever would want to get there because what would there be there after the happiness? I'd need to be or do something else. I didn't want it to be the end of my journey. And I realized that I did experience happiness and I do. I just don't call it happiness. I call it excitement. When I'm excited, it's what most people process as, as, as being happiness to them. I just, just call it a different name and it fills me with those good emotions, those good feelings of um, my receptors taking an uptake of dopamine and releasing serotonin in my system and some oxytocin it's all the same thing it makes me feel good so excitement and happiness are the same to me number eight the eighth thing that i've learned 40 years being on earth is i love people i love people i think i think people are incredible i think interacting with people being sociable with people having friendships having relationships with people is is one of our main reasons um to be here on earth and it's not one of the it's not something like maslow's self-actualization self-realization pyramid it's not something you need to sustain your life 
you could be alive and have no interactions with people as long as you had air, as long as you had shelter, as long as you had some food. Um, but what kind of life would it be with without people and, and richness of relationships and, 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 and the whole tapestry of emotions and different type of relationships that you or, or I have with people? I, I, I love people and people um, people make the world go round. Number nine, I hate people. I can't stand people. People annoy me, people agitate me, people piss me off. Sometimes I just want to go home and lock the door and not be around people. It just becomes overwhelming with, with having to deal with people's bullshit as well as my own bullshit. That people make me want to pull my head in and go postal at times. I hate people, I cannot stand people. Yep, it is possible to have two diametrically opposed opinions, depending on the day, sometimes the minute or the hour or the moment that I'm living in. It is possible to have both, ladies and gentlemen. Number 10, the 10th thing that I've learned 40 years on earth as I reevaluate my life and some of the things that I've learned is sometimes changing terrible trauma in myself or other people is easier than changing daily habits like biting your nails, getting up early, um, or stopping a habit like smoking. As weird as that sounds, sometimes people think, well, this terrible thing happened to me when I was younger and I've been carrying it around for 10, 20, 30 years. In my experience, oftentimes, that stuff that has been completed but people are still carrying around with them, like stuff that happened when they were younger, oftentimes, in my experience of working with people for 23 years and being in my own body and inhabiting it in my mind for 40 years, Oftentimes, dealing with the big shit, the deep shit, is easier and quicker than dealing with daily habits. It's an interesting thing. And I guess because oftentimes the, the trauma has, has been concluded, although maybe carrying it around and rum, ruminating over it, whereas these daily habits are something that we're doing each and every day, and it's like a, a program that's gone haywire. Number 11. You can look better as you get older. I, I, to toot my own horn, when I look back at pictures of myself from 10 years ago when I came over to Canada, I was fat, carrying around about extra 50 pounds of weight, had no hair, no beard, no tattoos, and yellow teeth. There you go. Um, and as I've got older now, and it's what often people have said about me, and I've noticed it, is I look a lot younger now, 10 years later, having a beautiful beard, tattoos, getting myself in shape and cleaning up my teeth. So I think as you get older and um, I'm gonna upset a demographic of my audience now, but specifically with men and yes, women, you can still look hot and beautiful as you get older, but specifically with, with, with men, if we look after ourselves, we can actually look better than perhaps potentially our peak years or feminine uh, peak years of beauty, which tend to be between the ages of 18 to 22. Um, so as guys, as long as we look after ourselves, we work out, we watch what we're putting in our body, the kind of environmental factors that we're in, we're exercising and using our minds right, we can actually look better and more handsome um, as we get older. So yay men. The 12th thing that I've learned in my 40 years of being on earth, is self-esteem is key. Now here's the thing, in life you are going to be thrown curveballs, I, I, I certainly have. This is not going to happen, as long as you're moving forward there are going to be challenges, there are going to be curveballs. The only way not to get curveballs and challenges, is well there's two ways, is to die, kill yourself, don't do that, okay, or just stop moving, just lock yourself in a cave or your apartment somewhere, never venture to, to better yourself, your business, your company, relationships, your health, just stay locked inside someday and absolutely do nothing else. And then perhaps um, you, you, you won't have any challenges, but as long as you're moving, you're going to get challenges in your life. This is why self-esteem is key. As I've often said, Self-esteem isn't a lack of challenges in, in, in our life. It is having challenges, accepting that life is not always easy and having the resolve and the resilience to know this is going to happen, to be prepared for it, to work through it, to get out on the other side, being a better person for it. Self-esteem is key. How do you develop your self-esteem? 
Well, self-esteem is that reputation that you have of yourself, as I often like to say. It's when you tell yourself you're going to do something, then you do it. Your self-esteem currency goes up. When you're kind and you do good things and you make people feel good for no other reason other than to make them feel good, and you don't have to mention it to anyone else. It's another way of increasing your self-esteem to keep topping it up. You can't have enough self-esteem. And it's that rich background, that rich tapestry that's always there. Sometimes I interchange self-esteem with self-belief. For me, it's pretty much the same thing. How it differs from something like confidence, in my opinion, is confidence is situational based. For example, you may be confident with your friend, but you might not be confident when you're asking the opposite sex out of the same sex if you are gay. Um, confidence, you may be confident in in teaching something where people have paid to come and see you, but when it comes to interacting with new people, then you shit yourself. Um, confidence is situational based. Self-esteem is, all right, I'm about to go into a situation. I'm not quite sure how it's going to turn out. I'm going to do my best and I'm going to be okay with that. And no matter what happens, I know I'll be okay and I'll find a way to turn this around to keep it on the right track to be positive. That's what self-esteem and self-belief is to me and why, it, why it's a very, very rich um, and wonderful trait to have and everyone should develop it. Number 13th, the 13th thing that I've learned 40 years being on earth is work for yourself. Now listen, I know not everyone's going to want to work for themselves. I know not everyone's going to have the inspiration or motivation to do that. That's okay. It's okay to do whatever you want as long as you make that conscious choice and it's not just something you've defaulted to. But for me, because this is my list, right? Remember, it's my list. I realized at a very early age, uh, like at the age of 17, when I did have some, some, some jobs working for other people, is I do not work well with other people. I like to be the captain of my own ship, do my own thing, show up when I want to show up, do the kind of work that I want to do and answer to myself, because there's no, never anyone is going to be more harsher on me than me when it comes to improving and getting better at my craft. I do not appreciate and I do not accept the opinions of other people unless they're on the same level of me or I perceive to be higher than me that I can grow and learn. If someone is below me, and this is not that I am an amazing God or anything like that, but when sometimes people try and give me their opinion and they're not anywhere near as successful in business, but they're trying to give me business opinions or they're trying to give me opinions on relationships and yet their relationships shit, or they're trying to give me um, tips on health, yet they're physically, morbidly obese. Um, I, I, I don't buy it. So be careful. Be very, very careful on, on the people that you do listen to. There should be people that are on your level or slightly above your level that you can learn and grow. But when we have these trolls that are out there that like to yap their gums, then pay no, pay no credence to that. Pay no, absolutely no attention to that because they're just wasting time. And if you start listening to those trolls, it's just going to pull you down and stop you from ascending where you want to be. So work for yourself. I realize I need to work for myself. I need to do my thing when I want to do it and answer only to me so I can grow, be the captain of my own plane. And that, that's key. Number 14, set a routine for yourself. And by yourself, I'm talking about me. And I'm also talking about maybe you'll get some tips of stuff that may improve your life. And not all of these things are going to be positive learnings, by the way. It's been a life filled with challenges and ups and downs, um, but I'm a better person for it. At least I like to believe that. Set a routine for yourself, number 14. It's really, really important, especially when you work for yourself and you don't have to be up at a particular time and you can create your own schedule as I can. It's very, very easy to get up late, very, very easy to overindulge in food, uh, internet, video games, sex, masturbation, drugs, any of that stuff. It's, it's hard to put those boundaries around yourself and self govern yourself to set a routine. That's why a routine is very important. When we have a routine in our life, when we create our own routine, it, it keeps our minds focused, it keeps our minds sharp, and it stops us defaulting to being lazy. Because as human beings, um, our default oftentimes is, is, is we're, we're quite lazy, and we're going to default to the to the road less traveled so we can get something done and, and get back to essentially being lazy because we, we, we want to find that road that's the easiest possible way of getting there. To set those routine up, routine for me is you know ideally getting up early, training every day, doing some kind of um, meditation, psychological practice every day, eating low carbohydrates, getting to bed on time, um, being straight edge, no alcohol, no drugs, 
no gambling, setting a certain amount of time that I work on my business every day, and a certain amount of time that I work in my business every day as well. It, it, they're all key, they're all key things to building up my own structure because it's not been self-opposed by uh, somebody else because again, going back to an early uh, learning that I had in life, I do not work well for others, I need to work for myself and create my own schedule. But it is important to keep your mind sane that you, you do set up, in my experience, some kind of routine, otherwise um, your mind can get in trouble. Oftentimes when I've worked with people with depression, and myself in the earlier days, it's because I never had any structure in my life because I'd left school early, had a horrible relationship with my folks, essentially sequestered myself um, in, my, in my bedroom for much of my teenage years with, with, with not much of a schedule other than watching uh, my favorite TV shows when they would show up and essentially playing video games but not being a valuable contributing member of society and oftentimes when i've worked with people with depression clinical depression all clinical depression means by the way is a doctor gay or a psychiatrist gave somebody a diagnosis of clinical depression um, they didn't look at their their brain scans and, and, and didn't get uh, biopsies of their brain or blood or saliva to determine how much serotonin dopamine or oxytocin they had in their system at any time they just basically asked them to fill out a questionnaire and based on the answer to the questionnaire um, oh you're depressed let me give you some medication you're clinically depressed we have to be careful of these label folks we have to be careful of these labels because depression isn't something that you're born with. It isn't something that's passed down with your parents, in my opinion, of supposedly being depressed when I was younger and working with hundreds and hundreds of people who were um, regarded, had the label of clinical depression. It's just a habit of something that people do. They've done it too long. I did. I forgot that I was doing it. It became unconscious, much like tying your laces. First few times you learn to tie your laces is a bit weird. But then eventually you don't have to think about tying your laces. Now you just, you know, you just tie them and they're done. You don't have to think, well, do I tie the right loop over the left or the left over the right? You just do it. And that's oftentimes how we do these habitual patterns. And that's all depression is. It's a pattern. It's something people do consistently that's not advantageous to them. Hence the importance of governing our minds by setting up a structure and things for it to do. Number 15, the 15th thing, this is going to be a long show by the way, that I have learnt. I might even broke this up into two episodes, let's see how this goes. Number 15, all women are crazy until you understand them. That's right, this may alienate some of the audience but I'm being honest, my experience, all women are crazy until you understand them and even speaking to women after they get over the <gasps> gasp of oh my god I can't believe you say that they're like yeah we, 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 we are crazy you are crazy every one of you I love you all you're amazing you make the world a better place but you're fucking crazy until we take time to understand you as men and understand that the crazy cornucopia that crazy volcano of hormones that are traveling through your body, mixed with limiting beliefs, trapped with emotions and insecurities. Once you understand that almost cosmic soup of what's going on inside of a woman, then you can realize that everyone's just doing their best, even those crazy women. And God bless you, I love you. Number 16, the 40 things that I've learned with 40 years being on earth is everyone's insecure. I'm insecure. The president's insecure. George Clooney's insecure. Cameron Diaz is insecure. Whatever celebrity, athlete, incredibly powerful being you can imagine is insecure. Now, some people hide it better than others, and some people have done a lot of work and have and, and limited and eliminated as much as is possible but we're all insecure we're all insecure now it doesn't mean you need to stay in that place and be like oh god i'm i'm not good at anything and i will always suck and no one will ever love me and i'll never make the money i want and 
and getting the kind of shape that I want and win this race or, or do this. No, no, no. It means we're insecure. It's a voice we have inside all of our head. Yet the people that we perceive are very, very successful, be that in entertainment industry, be that in politics, be that in relationships, be that in health, be that in business, is oftentimes they understand it, understand that everyone's going through it and just deal with it better than the people who get suckered into it and, and don't move forward. Everyone's insecure. Number 17, be different. I, uh, I realized from a very early age that I was different. And I know everyone likes to think that they're different, but in my experience, most people are the same. And because I was so different in the way that I looked at the world and, and how I acted, when I was in my teenage years, I felt that I would need to curb certain personality traits certain ways of dressing, certain ways of, of being, certain views that I have, because I wanted to fit in, because I was filled with way more insecurities than I had resilience and I had to deal with it. And the more I tried to fit in, the more I lost that part that was inside of me. And the more, and, and, and I would have this lack of self-esteem, and the more then I learned to embrace the difference inside of me and use that to work, because it is me at my core, and if you've ever met me or listen to one of these podcasts before ever or ever work with me you know this is not a gimmick this is real i see the world very very differently it's not because i'm a special snowflake or any because i was born this way with a magical gift no no it's just something i developed over time i, I believe in um nurture not nature i don't believe i was born this way it was just a perfect cosmic soup of things that happened if you will and what i noticed is uh, by having earlier friendships in, in my late teenage years, my good friend Ahmed back then, and later on in the hypnosis industry, looking at looking at people that that were different, um, somebody like a Carl Smith um, that I had a great affinity for, and I asked myself, why do I have a great affinity for these particular particular people? I'm like, because they're different, and not trying to be someone other than who they are, and it, and it gave me great confidence. And the ability to, to see these people, and there were other people as well, but to, to be themselves, have a unique style, and it allowed me to develop my unique style and to to put it out there and to be okay with it. And the more I was out there with it, the better I felt and the more success that I had in, in business, in relationships, with my self-esteem, that that, that um, contract, if you will, that I had with myself. So, so be different. Don't try and be like everyone. Be like no one. That's what be yourself means, folks. 18. What I've learned, 40 years being on Earth. Yeah, it was my birthday last week. If you want to send me gifts, I'm still um, open to receiving beautiful cards, uh, vouchers or gifts. Remember, mail at lukenosis.com. Feel free to send me free stuff. And your hate mail as well. Um, number 18. Things that I've learned, 40 years being on Earth. Become the you you needed as a kid. What do I mean by that? As a kid, as a kid, there's probably something you had in your mind that if only I was this type of person, or if only this type of person came along, um, life would be a little bit easier. I, I, everything would be okay. I, I'd be saved. I'd, I'd be protected. And I realised, as I've said often times, is no one's coming to save you. Nobody. There'll be people that love you, people that come, that people that go, mothers, fathers, relationships, friendships. But no one's coming to save you. So be the hero. Be the person you needed as a kid. And I, and I didn't do it consciously. But as I've gotten older, I, I've become that person. And I am continue to become that person. That person that I wish that had, when I was 11 and I was alone and I was scared. And, and I was depressed and I was anxious and I was overweight and I had no friends and just felt like shit. I've developed this person, I've developed this character. Now this is not, a, I say character, but it is me also. It's just the ego state that I have, this this warrior, this this man, this masculinity, but also the ability to care, to be that hero, to protect that younger version of me. If I did have a time machine, I'd go back and, and save him. So be the hero that you needed as a kid. Don't look for it. Don't look for it from me or anyone else. A god or a celebrity or a pseudo celebrity become it in yourself be the hero you needed as a kid 19 
Another thing that I've learned, 40 years being on earth, 40 things that I have learned, carbs make you fat. I don't know many people, including myself, that have a diet of just pure fat that are fat. I don't know many people, including myself, that have a diet that's predominantly proteins that are fat. I know lots of people, including myself in the past, that had a diet with lots of carbohydrates, sugars, breads, pastas, sweets, candies, frappuccinos, donuts, pizzas that were fat. Now you can say, yeah, well, it's about eating stuff in moderation and we need carbohydrates. Well, actually you don't really need carbohydrates. When you look at the studies on fasting, uh, prolonged fasting, intermittent fasting, ketosis, ketones, we actually don't really need carbohydrates. We need protein, we need fat, we don't really need carbohydrates. Certainly not to the level of, of what most of us indulge in. Carbohydrates make you fat. 20, halfway there. Everybody's addicted to something. Yeah, including me. Including me. Now, some addictions sound better than others. I mean, you've got on one scale of, of addiction, you've got emotional addictions, being addicted to love and acceptance. You've got toxic physical addictions, like being addicted to many people that I see for cocaine, alcohol, cigarettes. Well, they believe they are at least addicted, uh, at least emotionally. Heroin, crystal meth bad behaviors addicted to doing anxiety or depression on themselves or no not being aware that they're doing it to themselves all addicted to something we've all got an addiction whether it be video games whether it be sex whether it be making money whether it be workaholic some seem more positive than others and some on a scale of addictions probably are but don't be judging people who are addicted to something if they're working to to have more balance on their life and work out that addiction and come out the other end don't look down on those people because you're addicted to something we're all addicted to something we're all addicted we're all obsessed by something in our life and that's not necessarily a good thing but we all we all are on some level number 21 40 things that I've learned in my life is get coaching in the areas you're weak in if you're not very good at um, making money then actually spend some money to make some money to, to, to hire someone who's going to help you to learn how to make money. If you're good at making money, but you're not very good at saving money, then, then and, and, and you've tried many different things, trying implies failure, remember, then go and hire someone, an expert, a coach that can teach you about saving money. If you're not very good being in relationships, you're not, you can't um, be vulnerable in relationships, then, and you've tried, then go out and hire someone that that's their job is to teach people how to be vulnerable in relationships. If you're not good at, at losing weight, keeping off weight and staying in shape, then hire someone to, to help you to not only get in shape, but, but stay in shape. If you're not really good at running a business and you've tried and you've had multiple failures, just means you haven't succeed, succeeded yet, then go and hire someone that has a reputation at building business and learn from them. Get coaching in the areas you're weak in. No matter how big and strong we like to imagine, we all have weaknesses, we all have blind spots. It's important that if we've given it a shot and we're not getting the job done on our own, then hire someone in that area, whatever the area is, to get coaching in that area to become more, to actualize that skill inside yourself so you become better, so you save time and you shave literally years off of, off of, off of going through trial and error in this. Get coaching in the areas you're weak in. It's not a sign of failure most successful people in the world from athletes to celebrities to, to billionaires oftentimes have coaches in the areas that they're weak in to make themselves better it's an intelligent thing to do number 22 things that I've learned 40 things I've learned in 40 years of being on earth everybody lies I lie your parents lied your friends lie news lies social media lies and you lie this is not a judgment it could be a big, massive lie. It could be a small lie, but we all lie. And we don't lie to anyone more than we lie to ourselves. We all do it. Accept that we do it. Do your best to be as honest as you can with yourself and other people. But acknowledge we all lie. And oftentimes, one of the main reasons people lie, sometimes it can be deceitful to hurt people, but oftentimes a lie can be well-intentioned. You don't want to hurt somebody, so you lie. So lying is not always evil. It's not always bad. But understand we all do it, everyone does it, all of the time. Just make yourself as best as you can be at telling the truth and start by telling the truth to yourself. 23, gimmicks are cool. 
what's a gimmick? Well, anything's a gimmick. Any adjective that you, uh, <laughs> you you can't think of a specific name for is a gimmick. I love gimmicks. Gimmicks, of course, is why I'm a big fan of wrestling and magic and superheroes. My apartment is adorned with many gimmicks around me. In some form or fashion, my tattoos are a gimmick. My rings are a gimmick. doesn't mean they're not real. They, they have deep meaning for me. And the reason I have these gimmicks scattered around is it helps to keep me in an uptime state, a positive state. It lets me stay in touch with that younger, that younger child inside of me to keep that wonderful sense of creativity open. To not take myself or life or anyone else too seriously. To remember the magic. You, 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 if you want to see me act like a child, you want to see me regress in about three seconds without a hypnotist putting me, doing timeline with me or putting a time machine, then just show me toys that I haven't seen for years and years from my youth and you'll see me regress to a child right there and I'll air access that ego state, that role inside me that will just be in that place of joy and happiness. So gimmicks are cool. I have championship belts around me, I have masks from horror movies around me, I have implements and tools and weaponry from superheroes around, around me. Gimmicks are cool. I'm more than a gimmick. You're more than a gimmick. Doesn't mean gimmicks are bad. Find your gimmick. Exploit your gimmick. Because we're all a gimmick. Just find out what your gimmick gimmick is and turn up the volume on that when you go out there and use your gimmicks to inspire you. To make you more. To make you the superhero of your own life. 24. 24th thing that I've learned out of 40 and 40 years being on earth. Parcels are cool. I love parcels. Sometimes I'll just go on eBay or Amazon and I'll purchase cheap things. Sometimes expensive things. Sometimes I'll forget. But then I get that parcel and it makes me happy. It doesn't really matter what's inside it. As long as it's not a ticking bomb. don't want to... Uh, get copycats of the Unabomber after me. But parcels are cool. I love to receive parcels. 25. Celebrate your victories. I was working with a client yesterday, and I won't say his name, but if he's listening to it, you know who you are. He was talking about achieving great success in football, or soccer as uh, everyone outside of England and Europe calls it. And even when he would score goals and, and, and be successful and have a great game and be the most valid player, MVP on his team, he'd get off the pitch and he would beat himself up like, ah, oh, I could have done better, I did shit today. And he would drown his sorrows with alcohol. Now listen, we should all be getting better. No matter how good an athlete you are or business or, or whatever you're doing, you should always look to be better. You should always look to grow. Growth is in, really important. But also when you have victories, fucking celebrate your victories. If you didn't want to play soccer or play your sport, but you went out and you did that, whether you win, lose or draw, celebrate it. If you scored a fucking goal in your game, celebrate it. If your goal was to lose five pounds this month and you only lost three, celebrate it. If your goal was to make $100,000 this year and you only made 90, celebrate it. Because when you celebrate your victories, your unconscious mind says, oh, all this good when I, when, I, when I do things for you. You reward me, you make me feel good about myself. Remember our unconscious as the emotional intellect of about a five-year-old, like a little child. Think of it a little child if you have children. And it's a bit like your child drawing you a picture, painting you a picture when they're at kindergarten, when they're four or five. Imagine you get that picture and um, it comes in. And you're like, oh, that picture's shit. I'm never going to put that on my refrigerator. Is that me? It doesn't look like me. It's a stick figure. It's, it's disgusting. Imagine doing that to your child if you had one. Or imagine if you did. And imagine seeing their face. Imagine feeling what they'd feel after they took all that time and energy to do the best that they could. And you shit all over them. Well, every time you have a victory and you, sh and you give yourself a hard time, you don't celebrate it, you're shitting on that child in front of you. To eventually that sh child... Will have a complex and won't draw, paint any pictures for you anymore because you make them feel like shit. That's what you do with your unconscious mind. So when you have victories, fucking celebrate them. Understand you can grow and be more, but celebrate the victories. Give yourself a pat on the back, a couple of deep breaths, big smile, listen to your favourite song, watch your favourite music, music uh, video or movie. 
but celebrate it because this is going to tell that five-year-old inside of you, great, every time you do this, you're going to be rewarded by love, by emotion, by cool things. Don't be rewarded by drugs, too much food, too much sex, anything that's outside. Celebrate it from things inside, but give a positive emotion of celebration to that child inside of you. 26, 26, 26 things out of 40 things that I've learned in 40 years being on earth. It was my birthday last week, after all. Sex is just sex. Now, don't get me wrong, I like sex as much as the next guy or girl. It's, um, it's uh, important for, um, you know, if you believe in evolutionary psychology, as I do, uh, two purposes on, on earth are, 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 are um, survival, to stay alive, and replication, to have children. Um, and sex is certainly linked to that. And, and sex can be amazing. Sex can be incredible fun, especially when, you, when you're doing it with somebody that's on, on the right page. But at the end of the day, sex is, is just sex. It's nothing more than that. It's just sex. And after taking so much time and effort in getting sex, in acquiring sex, I realise as I get older, sex is just sex. Yes, I we tend to continue to have sex and enjoying the hell out of it. But sex is just sex, guys and girls. It's not the most important thing in the world. Number 27, things that I've learned 40 years being on earth. When I have energy, I can do anything. I can literally move mountains in my mind. When I have no energy, I can't do shit. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to make phone calls. I don't want to hypnotize people or help people. I don't want to leave the house. Energy is key. Energy is key. With energy, anything can be done. With no energy, nothing can be done. Energy is more important than the emotion. Energy is more important than the task. It all starts with energy. With the right energy, anything can change. Anything can move. Anything can happen. But it requires energy, first and foremost. Number 28, anger is motivational. I spent many, 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 many years, more than I like to uh, admit, being angry. Because anger was very motivational for me. I became very successful using the fuel of my anger to stick the middle finger up at the world and to be successful at my craft and as a man and, and what I do in the world. Very, very motivational. Gave me that rocket fuel to get shit done. Anger is motivational. 29. Anger is toxic. You stay in anger too long. It will corrode you as it did me for a long time. You start to, I started to filter everything through these angry glasses, these angry goggles. And everything made me angry all of the time. And it flipped over. It started to spill over. So instead of it just being motivational now... It just started to be like a cancer, a corrosion effect on everything that I touched. Yes, I'm a human being. I can hold two diametrically opposed things in the air at once. That anger can be motivational and it can be incredibly toxic. So be careful how long you're in anger for. Don't spend your life living there. Number 30. Awkward humour is the best. Think Ricky Gervais. Think Sasha Baron Cohen. Think Jim Carrey in his later years. Think David Letterman, Howard Stern. Awkward humour is the best. When you're cringe of it makes you feel uncomfortable. This is the best type of humour, in my humble opinion. 31 things that I've learned while being on Earth for 40 years. The real world is faker than wrestling. I was at a training last week. And I was talking to a chap and everything was seemingly going quite well. He's actually telling me a story of some techniques that he'd learned from another podcast that I did. And that he'd used them with a client to great success. And I found out where he was from and it was near um, the offices of a specific wrestling organization. And uh, he then said, oh, you don't, wrestling, you're, you're a wrestling fan. You don't, you don't, you don't believe in that, that wrestling, do you? It's not real, you know. And it always um, kind of made me chuckle when it used to frustrate me as hell growing up. But it makes me chuckle now. People say, well, wrestling's not real. As if that means anything. Because you enjoy movies, right? But movies aren't real. 
you enjoy your TV shows like Game of Thrones, right? It's the in thing to watch now. You enjoy it, right? But you know it's not real. You know, most of the news you watch, you, you enjoy it. You think you're learning something from it, right? But, but, but you know it's not real. Just because it's not real doesn't mean you can't get enjoyment from it, that you can't like it. It all the way made me chuckle. Nothing's, nothing's real. Nothing's real. No form of entertainment that you're watching is real. But why are you attaching that thread, that string to wrestling not being real? Nothing's real. I just, you know, if you see a superhero movie, I love these things. They're not real. Doesn't take me out of those three hours of watching the movie and enjoying the hell out of it. I'm watching my favorite TV shows. I'm watching porn. None of it's real. Doesn't make me enjoy it any less, though. Nothing's real. The only difference with something like wrestling is we know it's not real. In fact, the uh, the owner of the biggest wrestling organization of all time, Vincent Kennedy McMahon, God damn it, came out about 10 years ago and said this isn't real. He admits it's not real. I'm not trying to pull the wall over your eyes. They're telling you it's not real. How often does a TV show tell you it's not real? How often does a movie tell you it's not real? How often does the news tell you it's not real? How often does those posts on social media have a disclaimer that says it isn't real? How often does Mark Zuckerberg himself come out and say, oh, by the way, don't believe in all your posts of all your friends having an amazing life because most of it isn't real. None of it's real. But wrestling's probably more real than most life because you know it's not real going into it. That people are trying to sell you on a bill of rights that the news, the social media, the TV show that you're watching is real. No, it's not. Nothing's real. That's why wrestling is probably more real than real life. Number 32. Oh, 32 now. What I've learned 40 years being on earth. I am good. I'm good. I'm a good person. I care about people care about the people that invest time and energy with me care about the world care about there being a world here care about animals small children want people to feel good about themselves even the people that I don't know I want people to have self-esteem even the people that I'll never meet out there because I have a theory that if we all had incredible self-esteem not delusion not confidence then there probably isn't going to be so many wars rapes murders famine in the world if everyone was coming from a place of self-esteem. I'm good. I want that for myself. I want that for the world. I, I, I believe in that. I believe in that for the world. I believe in that for myself. I want good. I want good things to happen. I'm a good person. 33. I am bad. I get angry. And at times I get toxic. At times I can be unbearable being with. Just try and be inside my own head. I wish bad things upon people. I am bad. I wish that most people in the world would fan us off and disappear and it would just be me left with a few beautiful women. I am bad. But again, as human beings, and speaking as myself, can diametrically hold those two very different opinions up at the same time and realize I am both good and I am bad. Can you do that? 34. People are not as they seem on social media. Now you see the pictures of people on social media and they look amazing, they look fantastic. You ever met somebody off Tinder and they put their best picture up there, look incredible, and you meet them in real life and you're like, uh, who are you? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm your date. But you don't look anything like her. And you see on your Instagram, on your Twitter machine, on uh, Facebook, people are posting all these things about how amazing their life is, how lavish their parties are, how they're so blessed. And they're just putting their best stuff up there, the stuff they wish they'd be. And sometimes you look at it and you're like, well, my life is not going so well right now. My relationship's not going so great. I, I have not got that amazing six pack like that person that keeps appearing in my Facebook feed oh my god this person just signed another person up to help and my business isn't isn't going so well right now i'm a piece of shit i'm a loser and compared to everyone else because social media is is real and compared to those my lifestyle is my life is is boring and um 
not special and it's it's not unique it's uh, why am i even here i just what a miserable life folks social media is bullshit people are not as they seem on social media they're just putting up a projection of how they hope to be most of the times and we accept that as a reality except that people are probably doing their best and probably not quite as it appears in social media they don't quite look as good they probably don't quite have it together as much as they appear on social media number 35 35 things that i've le learned <laughs> out of 40 of being on earth it was my birthday in case i didn't tell you last week and i was 40 last time i'm gonna say it please feel free to send me gifts and cards and you're welcome and loving messages to celebrate my life <laughs> on um mail at lukenosis.com n-a-i-l at lukenosis l-u-k-e-n-o-s-i-s dot -E com and yes this is a very ego driven show but honestly I, I hope that from my learnings of learning a lot of shit uh, in 40 years that some of these lessons can can um can cut down the learning time in your your life and make you not feel as alone not because i'm a god not because i'm anyone particularly special but i've learned things and i've gone through things that perhaps you don't need to go through it as long as i did and perhaps you just need another voice of knowing that you're okay and you're good enough and um everyone's fucked up 35 tattoos are cool I waited until I was an old man. I waited until I was well, 37 to get my first tattoos because I knew that when I broke that proverbial glass ceiling, when the floodgates opened, I would not stop. And in um, three years, what's that, 36 months, I'm up to about 39 tattoos, more than one a month. Tattoos are cool. Love tattoos. And all the tattoos that I have, they, they truly mean something to me. And, and I wanted to wait until I was an old man because I just didn't want to have tattoos because they were the flavor of the month because this celebrity had it or this uh, person had this tattoo and it looked good for them. That to mean something. All my tattoos, if you stop me and you ask me what it means, they, they, they all mean something. Some mean more than others, but they all mean something because I like to think of myself as a piece of art and I like to wear my art on my body and my tattoos are my story and they're scattered all over my body. And I, and I find people that, that subscribe to the same beliefs, finding out about their tattoos and, and what they mean for them um, can actually be some very delightful and, and insightful conversations. It goes back to warrior tribes and, and, and people having tattoos through coming of age is um, symbolizing certain things inside their life. So tattoos are, are cool. Um, I love tattoos and people have tattoos. 36, 40 things that I've learned being alive. Beards are cool. Yes, beards are cool. I'm sorry, ladies, you can't grow a beard, um, but beards are cool. Um, I like to experiment with many different facial hairs, being a uh, big admirer of the work of George Michael back in uh, my formative years and playing around with every kind of beard and stubble and goatee, what you can imagine, until I stumbled upon this big, beautiful, glorious beard that I have right now. Beards are cool. I like beards. But, but gentlemen, got to take care of our beards. Got to take care of the beard. My goodness, it takes some fucking time looking after this beard. You got to trim it. You got to shampoo it. You got to oil it. You got to condition it. You got to style it. It is a big fucking hullabaloo looking after this thing on my face. But beards are cool. I tell myself. I'm taking all that time spending that forty, fifty dollars on that shampoo, that thirty-five dollars on that oil, um, breaking my beard brush and having to buy another one. I'm getting frustrated. I tell myself, beards are cool because beards are cool. Number thirty-seven out of the forty things I've learned being on Earth for forty years is vibe is everything. Your vibe, your energy, that energy where you're just in the moment. You're not a second in the past or five seconds in the future. You're there. You're present. It is coming through you. There is no filter and you are just being present and you are just feeling good for no particular reason other than you are alive. And you can be silent, but people, you're attracting people to you. Vibe is important. Vibe is key. When you sort out your vibe and you can stabilize your vibe as much as any of us can and you can be in that beautiful vibe, it almost doesn't matter what you're doing because that vibe is how you're going to attract the kind of life that you want. And no, I don't believe you just sit down, do nothing in your life, law of attraction and just wish things had happened. You have to get off your ass because the universe, I believe, rewards action. You have to do shit, even stuff you don't want to do. 
But then there, there often comes a time when the universe rewards you for that hard work. And it might not be immediately after you did the task that you thought you should be rewarded for. It might be a few weeks, months, years down the line. But put, keep putting forward that diligent effort. Increase your vibe. Eat well. Use your mind well. Sleep well. Have good interactions with people. Be social. Get up early. Have cold showers. Vibe. Vibe is everything. 36. Sorry, I'm on 39. No, I'm not. I can't even count. We're on 38 right now. 38 things that I've learned in 40 years of being on Earth. Politics is bullshit. Oh, I might have some people who are conservative here or some people who are liberal here. But at the end of the day, politics are bullshit. Yes, and you, you may work in politics and politics are bullshit. And you're like, but if you, we can't make a difference in the world if we don't get the right people in power. The right people are never going to be in power. Whoever they want to be in power is going to become in power. So best thing you can do is live your best life. You be the difference you want to make in the world. You be that pebble that's when it's thrown into that, that little lake. Those waves, those ripples reverberate far and wide you'd be the difference you want to be in the world politics is bullshit if you want to be the president if you want to be the prime minister to quote richard bander it should disqualify you from ever being involved politics are bullshit 39 get ready to offend some people right now religion is bullshit listen i don't mean that you 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 it can't give you some hope or some good feelings out there but fundamentally it's it's all bullshit it's a way of, um, you know, wish it, you know, I can be a horrible person in this life, but then I'm going to be rewarded in the next life. Who says there's going to be a next life? Listen, I don't know if there's going to be a next life. I'm an atheist. That doesn't mean that I'm going to shit all over your beliefs, although it may appear that I'm doing that right now. It's not. Listen to me. I don't care what religion you are, what you do. If it makes you a better person, a good person, your vibe is high and you're a kind person, then do whatever the hell you want. But don't blame your religion. Don't blame someone else's religion. Don't think your religion is going to make everything okay. Go out. Be a good person. Do good work. And keep making that better and better and better. Because no God that's going to come and save you. Whatever religion you are. And maybe I'll die. No, more in fact, I'm pretty sure that I'll die someday. And perhaps there will be a person called God. And perhaps... You know, they'll be like, hey, see, I did exist. You were wrong. And if I'm proven wrong, then I am wrong. But right now, it just seems to make sense that there probably isn't a God. And it's okay. I'm okay with that. So you know what? I'm going to make this life my best life. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And if there is a benevolent being out there filled with love and goodness who created this earth, I don't really think that he, she or it is going to be particularly upset. Or their ego is particularly going to be bruised like us human beings that I didn't believe in them when I was alive. Religion's bullshit. Live a good life. Be a kind person. Put as much love out there as you can. Pick people up when they're down. Do the best work you can. That should be your religion. It certainly is mine. And number 40. 40 things that I have learned being alive for 40 years. Punk rules. Now, the punk movement was um, in the 70s and early 80s, and I was mere a baby at that time, so I was not necessarily rocking out at, uh, as a three year old um, with a mohawk on my head and pink and purple hair. But what I mean is punk, as in the, the attitude of punk, and the attitude of punk means taking no shit. Doesn't mean being destructive, doesn't mean hurting people, doesn't mean being a dick or being an arsehole. But it means that just not taping, taking shit from anyone, from the world, from yourself. It means walking your own path. Walking the path of a different drummer. Living the life that you want to live. Being the person that you want to be. Not being cajoled or doing everything everyone else wants. Because everyone else is doing it and no one took the time to think about it. Oh, this might not be a good thing for me to do. But everyone else is doing it and I want to fit in. Punk is saying, fuck that. Fuck your rules. I'm going to live my life by my rules. You may not understand them. It's okay. You don't have to understand them. You may not accept them. It's okay. You don't have to accept them. It's my life and it's my rules. And 
it's working out pretty well for me and it gives me this wonderful sense of freedom that I'm going to do whatever I need to do punk rules so hopefully you've enjoyed this bumper edition of uh, Unstuck with Hypno Punk Transformation of Edge as I've been open and vulnerable and shared 40 things that I've learned some good things some things that were tough lessons in my life perhaps you can learn some stuff from this podcast put it into your own life if you only get one thing that you learn from today and you pepper it into your own life then message me at mail at lukenosis.com, M-A-I-L at L-U-K-E-N-O-S-I-S dot com and let me know what thing resonated with you and what one of these lessons are you going to use in your own life to get yourself to the next level and be a, a fully actualized person. As always, I have been Luke Michael Howard, the hypnopunk of Luke Gnosis Hypnosis. Always believe. <laughs>